ธรรมของพระเจ้าในเช้าวันนี้มาจากพระธรรมยาก่อบทที่5ข้อ7ถึง11 Scripture reading this morning comes from James 5 verses 7 to 11 I'll read in Thai เพราะเหตุเพราะฉะนั้นพี่น้องทั้งหลายจงอดทนจนกว่าองค์พระผู้เป็นเจ้าจะเสด็จมาดูเถิดชาวนารอคอยผลนั้นล้ำค่าที่จะได้จากแผ่นดินและเพียงคอยจนกระทั่งมีผลต้นฤดูและผลปลายฤดูท่านทั้งหลายก็จงอดทนเช่นนั้นเหมือนกันจงตั้งอกตั้งใจให้ดีด้วยว่าการเสด็จมาขององค์พระองค์พระผู้เป็นเจ้าก็จวนจะถึงอยู่แล้วพี่น้องทั้งหลายอย่าคุมเครื่องใจต่อกันเกรงว่าท่านจะถูกพิพากษาดูเถิดองค์พระผู้พิพากษาประทับยืนอยู่หน้าประตูแล้วพี่น้องทั้งหลายของข้าพเจ้าจงเอาแบบอย่างในการทนทุกข์และการอดทนของพวกผู้พยากรณ์ผู้ได้กล่าวในพระนามขององค์พระผู้เป็นเจ้าดูเถิดเราถือว่าผู้ที่อดทนก็เป็นสุขท่านได้ยินเกี่ยวกับความอดทนของโยกและได้เห็นที่สุดปลายขององค์พระผู้เป็นเจ้าแล้วว่าองค์พระผู้เป็นเจ้านั้นทรงเปลี่ยนไปด้วยพระเมตตาและความกรุณาปราณีสักเท่าใดขอพระเจ้าทรงอวยพรกับทุกท่านที่ได้ยินได้ฟังพระธรรมของพระองค์ Scripture readings from James 5, 7 to 11. I will read briefly in English. Be patient, then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too, be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. That is God's word this morning. Uh, the main focus of today's message is uh, what's in the title. You know, be patient. Um, this reading in James uh, actually tells us, in a sense, what it takes to be patient in this life. Uh, it's certainly a quality <clears throat> we all need to have in abundance. Now, you know, I mean, if you think about it, life is full of situations that. Test our patience, right? right? I mean, how about stuff like traffic, or how about people who drive through the stoplights? Um, how about waiting in a doctor's office, uh, in the dentist's office for hours? Um, I don't know if you guys have done something like that. Um, one time, there's a guy who walked into a doctor's office, and the receptionist asked him what he had. Um, the guy said, uh, shingles. So she took down his name and address and insurance and asked him to have a seat. You know, that's kind of typical. Fifteen minutes later, a nurse's aide came out and asked him what he had. I mean, he said, shingles. So she took down his height and weight and medical history and told him to wait in the examining room. A half hour later, the nurse came and asked him what he had. He said, shingles. So she gave him a blood test uh, or blood pressure test, an electrocardiogram, and you know, told him to take off his clothes and wait for the doctor. An hour later, the doctor came in and asked what he had. You know, he said, shingles. <clears throat> the doctor said, where? He said, outside in the truck. Where do you want them? <laughs> I mean, you know, obviously the delivery man, that's who he was, you know, his patience was highly tested, uh, right? He, he came to deliver roof shingles, but they thought he had shingles. Um, but then maybe he wasn't very smart, or else he could have explained first what kind of shingles he had. Um, 
So, you know, I mean, the point there is, you know, life itself can test our patience. I mean, you know, don't you get tired of feeling tired? Uh, don't you get tired of the world sometimes when you listen to the news or hear the news? Uh, you can get upset or angry at all the crimes that take place, uh, you know, not just in the world, but in America, you know, right at our doorstep. I mean, don't you wish all of these things could come to an end? Um, don't you wish that at times the Lord would come back and just say, yeah, it's done. You know, it's call an end to all these things. Uh, it's like, you know, do you sometimes pray, Lord, grant me the patience to deal with all the troubles and situations in my life which causes me stress and anger. And uh, Lord, please hurry with that. You know, with that prayer sometimes get to you. Uh, do you know what the last prayer is that's recorded in the Bible? Revelations 22.20. It says, he who testifies to these things says, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Last prayer. Let's <coughs> pray the Bible. And the question is, can, can we, or you, can you all pray that prayer and mean it? I bet maybe many of us can often feel that way, but we somehow know that hopefully God knows best and, and does best. And really the only reason uh, that Scripture says that He hasn't sent Jesus back is because He is patiently waiting for more people to come to Christ and be saved. So, God is patient. We are not. And uh, doesn't His patience tell us something about life? You know, it tells me once again that there is more to life than this life. God will set all things straight. Uh, he will correct all errors and make everything right in the next life. So it's like we may suffer for a season, but there is a greater and better and longer season that is coming. So having patience is good. Uh, being patient is being able to stay where you are, you know, continue doing good, being unmovable, unshakable in your faith, even when you feel like running, or hiding, or giving up. A patient believer knows that God has not left him, nor forsaken him. Now, you know, the concept of patience, uh, we've heard that before in the first chapter in the book of James, where it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Our reading today teaches us a few ways of what it means to have patience. Um, first, it tells us about the patience of a farmer. Now, you know, an impatient person cannot be a farmer. Uh, I have met some farmers, but I've never met someone or a farmer who is actually impatient. Uh, because, you know, I don't know, any, any real farmers here? By any chance? Maybe your grandpa or other relatives in the past, maybe? I mean, notice that farmers, uh, I, bet they're, I bet they say they must be patient with the soil. You know, they must work hard and toil and prepare the soil to sow the seed. Um, especially during the time of Jesus with no irrigation, Jewish farmers would have to till until the early rains. And uh, also, other than the soil, farmers have to be patient with the seed. Because some seeds are weak and sickly. Some get eaten by birds. And farmers need to be patient with the season too. You know, because there's, if it's too much sun and too much rain, that pretty much can destroy the crops. Um, I heard of this study some years ago done by an agricultural school in Iowa. Uh, they said that the production of 100 bushels of corn from one acre of land requires 4 million pounds of water, 6,800 pounds of oxygen, 5,200 pounds of carbon, 160 pounds of nitrogen, 125 pounds of potassium and other elements. 
Um, in addition to all that, you know, there's rain and sunshine at the right times. Uh, and, uh, you know, although the farmer does exert a lot of hours and effort in terms of labor, they said that they only estimate that only 5% of the produce of a farm actually comes from the effort of the farmer, you know, because the rest come from all these other elements. Um, if that is true, then it is actually a matter of a farmer waiting on rain and sunshine and all these things to produce the crop. So it's a matter of waiting patiently. And why does a farmer wait for long? The farmer waits for the precious fruit. Harvest time brings rewards from the land and they can guarantee the next crop. So just to apply in a spiritual sense, believers like farmers uh, wait for a spiritual harvest. Your months and years spent in patient endurance only means that God is preparing. God is busy preparing a good harvest in our lives. God desires fruit as we plant the seeds of the gospel. God also desires the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. So we must remember that after planning, after doing all those things, the farmer does not just stand around doing nothing, uh, but the farmer is waiting and working. Um, I realize there may be many things that happen to us that cause us to want answers from the Lord, but uh, we must continue working and waiting. Otherwise, there's this temptation to get impatient. You know, we can become impatient with God. And most likely, if we're impatient with God, we are also impatient with others. Um, in terms of what the scripture is saying today, it's actually telling us what impatience looks like. Impatience looks like grumbling and complaining. Um, I heard about uh, this thing in Mexico. Um, you know, there's, there's hot springs everywhere there, right? I'm not sure, but that's sort of what I heard. Uh, in some places, there's hot springs and cold springs that can be found side by side. Uh, so sometimes women often boil their clothes in the hot springs and then wash them or rinse them in the cold springs. Um, and a tourist had, had been watching this procedure. He said to a friend who's a native of the place, uh, I guess people here think Mother Nature is very generous. You know, it's very convenient. It's hot and cold. Uh, the friend said, well, not really. There's actually much grumbling because Mother Nature does not provide the laundry soap. <laughs> so, grumbling, complaining. But Philippians 2, 14-16 says, Do everything without complaining or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault, in a crooked and depraved generation, in which you shine like stars in the universe, as you hold out the word of life. When we show our impatience by grumbling and complaining to someone or against someone, we need to be reminded that the judge is standing at the door. So how do we deal with this impatience that's in us? Remember that God is slow to anger. When you start to get unhappy with the way things are, the way to become patient is to think about how much you test God's patience. Think about the times when God was protecting you while you were complaining and grumbling. Or about times when God was holding you up while you were being ungrateful. And if God is slow to anger with you, you can be slow to anger with everyone else. A second way of becoming patient is by looking at the examples that uh, our scripture today provided. Very good examples. Um, just to show what patience is. And one of them is about Old Testament prophets. Now, we all know again that the Lord is full of compassion and mercy. But when the Bible talks about the prophets, it is talking about this special class or group of people in the Old Testament who suffered quite a lot in their ministries. Imagine if you're Isaiah. You're asked to preach the gospel faithfully to the nation. And you're asked to preach to people who won't believe you for many, many years. Um, how about imagining if you're Jeremiah? 
I mean, you have invaders from Babylon crossing your borders and coming to take over your nation. In God's message to Jeremiah, um, he said, tell Israel to let their country be taken over, to tell them to surrender to Nebuchadnezzar, who God was using as an instrument to humble him. Imagine as Jeremiah, you were assigned to say that and be considered as a traitor to your own nation. And in the end, Jeremiah was accused of being a traitor and being a false prophet. And because of his prophetic work, he was hunted down by the men of his own hometown. And then to add insult to injury, after the nation fell to Babylon, God asked Jeremiah to have Israel eventually work for the welfare of their enemy, you know, to work for prosperity and peace. Now imagine if you were the prophet Hosea. God tells Hosea to marry Gomer, a woman who will always be unfaithful. Um, that's so Hosea will be able to understand what God is going through, you know, in terms of God's relationship with his people. Hosea was supposed to be faithful to her and continue to bring her back into their relationship no matter how many times she was unfaithful. So, you know, all these prophets and their ministries, I mean, they, don't, they didn't look like successful ministries. Uh, the lives their life that they led were a mess, and uh, they were unappreciated, they were opposed. But God tells them to obey no matter what. You know, to be steadfast and firm, to be unshakable, even if they feel like giving up. Now, if you think about it, if any of these guys decided to stop what they were doing and took the easy way out and be practical, um, avoid suffering and do what's popular, uh, try to please people and make them happy. I mean, if they did all that, uh, they wouldn't be in the Bible. We wouldn't have heard of these people. But these prophets, they stood their ground. Because of that, their writings became a part of our scriptures. That's because they, they obeyed. They remained steady, no matter what. And because their writings became part of our scriptures, in the end, we count them as heroes of the faith. These are examples for us of being patient and being steadfast. Their lives remind us that God cares for those who suffer for His sake. Someone once says that the will of God will never lead you to a point where the grace of God cannot keep you. Um, another way to become patient uh, after the prophets, the way our scripture is, is said, is to also look at the example of Job. Now, Job is the classic example of a man that patiently endured suffering and was blessed by God for his faith. Uh, James reminds the believer that there are blessings for those who persevere. But if you look at Job, you can see that the road to prosperity is adversity. Remember how in the beginning Job lost all he had except for a wife that nags him and uh, three self-righteous friends. Job did not understand what the cause of all his sufferings were. Um, he did not know that there was all these things going on behind the scenes with God and Satan, and yet Job endured patiently. Uh, the book of Job is basically divided into three major thoughts. You know, the first chap three chapters is about distress, you know, what's going on. Chapters 4 to 37 is Job's defense, and chapters 38 to 42 is his deliverance. Uh, God humbled Job, and then in the end of his life, he exalts him by giving him twice as much as he had before. It is really difficult to find a greater example of suffering than Job. He lost his wealth, he lost his health, he lost all his ten children, and then his reaction to the loss in chapters 1, 20 to 22, it says, Then Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and fell on the ground and worshipped. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return. The Lord gave, and the Lord take away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
I mean, that, that, is, that is incredible faith. I mean, how many of us would have been praising God at the passing of our children? Um, I mean, just to think about it, it's, it's not great. But apparently, you know, Job, he trusted God. And perhaps he trusted God to take care of his children in the next life. I mean, how else could he praise God? So when we consider how Job endured such terrible suffering, I mean, how can we not endure? How can we not keep on living the life of faith? So just as a recap, to have patience, we need to look at the patience of a farmer, the patience of the prophets, the patience of Job. Then we ought to avoid grumbling or complaining, which is the sign of impatience. But most importantly, we ought to remember that God is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love for us. No matter how we mess things up, He is always patient with us. When Jesus Christ, when He was on the cross, the people around Him who witnessed this were not just His persecutors, but also present were His disciples and His friends, His family, you know, people who loved Him. And to, the, to those people at that time, Jesus dying on the cross did not make sense. I mean, how can someone who does miracles raise Lazarus from the dead, feed 5,000 people with some bread and fish? How can someone so full of wisdom and love, you know, why would something like this, why would God let this happen? Obviously, before Christ was resurrected, you know, people were discouraged. People may have in a sense, lost a part of their faith that day. But for us, we know the story. We know that God had a grand plan and purpose for the cross, which is eternal life. But first, it required suffering and death, because the road to prosperity required such adversity. Now, personally, I don't know how much of you all are going through you know, different issues in life that may be upsetting or discouraging. But God wants you to know that if you stay patient, you know, continue to do good, become unmovable, unshakable, even if you feel like running and giving up, God will not let you down. God will not let down the righteous who trust and hope in Him. May we all have even half the patient endurance of Job. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for caring for us, for never leaving us nor forsaking us, especially in the midst of all our trials and tribulations in life. We thank you in advance for the blessings that are to come out of our own adversities. Help us to develop this quality of patience, this fruit of patience and character, so we can stay steadfast and unshakable and true to your plan and purpose. Help us to be patient with you as you are patient with us. Help us to be patient with others, with our circumstances. And help us always to seek your will no matter how hard things get. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.